In the last video, we showed that any complex number can be written in the form x plus iy, which is called Cartesian form. We also saw that we can write that same complex number in the form r times cos theta plus i sine theta, which is known as mod arg form or polar form. In this video, we're going to look at the arithmetic of complex numbers. We'll look at it first algebraically, and then we'll look at it geometrically using vectors. So let's consider two complex numbers. We'll call the first one Z1, and that'll be equal to A plus IB. The second complex number we'll call Z2, and we'll set that equal to C plus ID. Then the addition, Z1 plus Z2, all we need to do is add the real parts together and add the imaginary parts together along with the common factor I. So Z1 plus Z2 is equal to A plus C as the real part, plus B plus D as the imaginary part, times I. Similarly, we can do the same thing for subtraction. But we can also do addition using vectors, geometrically. Again, if I consider those two vectors, Z1 and Z2, and I plot them on the argon plane, then I can move a copy of the vector Z1 to the other end of Z2. Similarly for Z2, I can move a copy of Z2 to the other end of Z1, and this forms a parallelogram. And if I construct the long diagonal from the origin there, then I can see from my vector addition head to tail diagram here that that diagonal represents the vector Z1 plus Z2. Similarly, if I look at the other diagonal, then I can see that since I have to travel along one vector backwards, it represents the subtraction Z1 minus Z2. So there's two simple ways of working with addition and subtraction of complex numbers, numerically and geometrically. Multiplication follows the usual rules for expansion of brackets but we need to remember that i squared is equal to negative one. We mentioned the complex conjugate in the previous video. Geometrically, this is the reflection of a complex number about the real axis. If we multiply a complex number by its conjugate, the result is a real number, a difference of two squares. We can use this to develop the process of division for complex numbers. We first multiply the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator, and then simplify. This forms a real number on the denominator, allowing us to form a new complex number. We could also complete multiplication by first converting the two complex numbers to mod arg form. In this way, we can exploit the compound angle results of trigonometry to see the resulting complex number has a modulus that is the product of the original two moduli and an argument that is the sum of the two original arguments. This leads us to a geometric interpretation of multiplication in terms of that first complex number. The product of moduli results in a scaling of that original complex number, and the summation of arguments leads to a rotation. Of particular interest is the repeated multiplication of i by itself, which we can see repeats every fourth power. Geometrically, we can see that multiplication by i results in a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation with no scaling. To finish off this video, we should look a little closer at mod arg form and determine precisely what we mean algebraically by the modulus and argument. Let's plot the complex number z equals x plus i y on the argand plane. Recall that the modulus is the distance from the origin to the point representing z, and the argument is the angle made with the positive real axis. We can form a right triangle, and thus use Pythagoras to determine that r equals the square root of x squared plus y squared, and that tan theta equals y on x. Although we do need to be mindful that this theta is the auxiliary angle, and we should take careful note of which quadrant the complex number is in. In the next video, we will take a closer look at the complex conjugate.